Good evening. This is Orson Welles, your producer of a special series of broadcasts presented by the makers of Pabst Blue Ribbon, the Mercury Summer Theater of the Air. Tonight and every Friday night, Pabst Blue Ribbon presents you with a front row seat in America's favorite summer theater. And now, before America's famous producer, writer, director, Orson Welles brings you tonight's performance, and so that our story may move without interruption, allow me to tell you that our sponsors have kindly omitted their usual commercial message at the halftime. So right now, before we get started, here are some thoughts on the subject of the Labor Day weekend. And very important thoughts they are, too, for they concern blended, splendid, Pabst Blue Ribbon. Let other folks journey to highways and byways looking for excitement this weekend. Let others enjoy active sports. Yours truly, Brother Wallington, is going to park himself right on the porch with a nice, easy book and a convenient supply of blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. That's what I call really resting. The old body in a prone position on a comfortable glider or porch chair and the good right hand resting around a cool, foam-capped glass of those never less than 33 fine brews. Yes, sirree, that's the life. Enjoying that perfect Pabst Blue Ribbon flavor. Not too heavy, not too light, but clean, fresh, sparkling with the real beer flavor coming through just the way you like it. Remember, if your dealer can't always supply all you'd like, it's worthwhile to keep on asking for blended, splendid, tapped blue ribbon. And now, Orson Welles. Tonight's broadcast was originally prepared for an album for the Decca Record people by a Mercury actor and a very talented writer... Brainerd Duffield. The album was made by the Decker people, Mr. Charles Lawton in the role. We bring it to you on the air for the first time. Mr. Duffield's version, Mercury production of certainly the greatest novel ever written in America, Herman Melville's immortal Moby Dick. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long, I'd put down for a whaling voyage to sail about and see the watery part of the world. When on that winter's night the Pequod thrust her vindictive bows into the cold, malicious waves... A black evil magic shivered in the air. A heathen crew that had small touch of human mothers in them. And housed in his cabin there sat brooding a madman captain that no man aboard had ever seen. A madman with a stick of whalebone for a leg. Several days after leaving Nantucket, nothing above hatches was seen of Captain Ahab. It was a short, cold Christmas. And when darkness came, sky and sea split with thunder and blazed with a lightning. Then suddenly, I looked to the taffrail. And there, upon his quarter deck, Captain Ahab. Mr. Starbuck? Hi, Captain. All hands are here. Thank you, Mr. Starbuck. You hear me there, men? Aye, aye, aye. What do you do when you see a whale, men? Sing out for him. Sing out, Captain. He sing out loud. Aye, sing out for him, then, do you? And what do you do next, men? Go after him. Aye, 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 that's right, Captain. And what tune is it, ship? Pull two men. A dead whale or a snowboat? Aye, that's the tune, my boys. All ye masters, have any of you for now heard me give orders concerning a white whale? Look. You see this Spanish ounce of gold? A sixteen-dollar gold piece, men. You see it? Aye. 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 on top of it. Starbuck, I'll fix this gold piece to the mess. And whosoever of you raises me a white-headed whale with a wrinkled brow and a crooked 
your jaw. Whosoever of you raises me that same white whale shall have this gold out. Skin your eyes for him, boys. Look sharp for white water. If he but see a bubble, sing out, Captain Ahab. Be that the whale some call Moby Dick? Moby Dick. You know the white whale, then? Does he fantail a little curious, sir, before he goes down? And a curious spout, too, Captain? I'll be one, two, three, good many iron in he high, too, Captain. Aye. Aye, the harpoons lie all twisted and wrenched in him. Aye, his spout's a big one. Like a whole shock of wheat, and as white as Nantucket wool. And he fantails like a split jib and a squall. Death and devil's men. It is Moby Dick you've seen. Moby Dick. Captain Ahab. Yes, Mr. Starbuck. I too have heard of Moby Dick. But was it he took off your leg? Who told you that? I... Aye, Starbuck. It was Moby Dick that mastered me. Moby Dick that brought me this dead stump I stand on now. I it was that cursed white whale made a poor pagan lover of me to the end of time. I and I'll chase him round good hope, round the horn. Around the Norway maelstrom and around perdition's flames before I give him up. And this is what you have shipped for men to chase him on both sides of land and over all sides of earth till he spouts black blood and rolls thin out. But say, men, I think you to look brave. Aye, aye. God hunt us all if we hunt not Moby Dick to his death. Aye. Morning, Mr. Starbuck. Good morning, sir. Well, then, Mr. Starbuck. What's the long face about? No matter, sir. Speak, man, would you not chase the white whale? Are you not game for Moby Dick? I'm game for his crooked jaw and game for the jaws of death, Captain Ahab, if all comes fairly. But I come here to hunt whales, not my commander's vengeance. How many barrels will your vengeance fetch in the Nantucket market, Captain Ahab? Come closer, Starbuck. Money's not the measure of my lad. Let me tell you, my vengeance will fetch a premium here, here in this heart. Nay, sir, but vengeance on a dumb brute that smote you from blindest instinct. It's, it's blasphemous, madness and blasphemy. Mr. Starbuck, there's one god that's lord over the earth and one captain that's lord over the backward. You so much as dare think critically of me. I spoke too rashly, sir. My conscience is in this ship's keel, Mr. Starbuck. And though my motive and my object may be mad, I'll hunt the white whale. I'm bound to hunt him, heart, soul, and body. Her lungs and life will wreak my hate upon him. God keep me. Keep us all. No more than that. I must obey you. You need have no fear of me, but let Ahab beware of Ahab. Beware of yourself, old man. Go below, Mr. Starbuck. Aye, sir. Go below, down, dog, and kill. I'm not used to be spoke to that way, sir. I left the half like it. Then be called ten times a donkey and a mule and an ass and be gone or I'll clear the world of you. Master, there. Look sharp, all of you. There are whales hereabouts. If you see a white one... Break your lungs for him! Aye, aye, sir! What's that he said? Ahab, beware of Ahab. 
<laughs> There's something there. Oh, the lightning flashes through my skull. And mine eyeballs ache. And I... My whole beaten brain seems beheaded and rolling on some stunning ground. My heart is sick. like going down into a tomb for an old captain to descend this narrow scuttle down to his grave dug bed. I seek my nightly grave to sleep between shrouds. And down I go, gripping at the iron banister to help my crippled way. Hark to the crack and din of my bony step. My dreams will be of the crunching teeth of sharks. Dreams. If I could sleep, old age is wakeful. The longer linked with life, the less man has to do with aught that looks like death. Yonder the diver's sun, slow dived from noon, goes down. My soul mounts up. She wearies with her endless hill. Time was when as the sunrise spurred me, so the sunset soothed. No more. No more. This lovely light, it lights me not. All loveliness is anguish. Damn, subtly and malignantly damned in the midst of paradise. Good night. Yet it's not too hard a task. Good night. It's not too hard. What I've dared, I've willed, and what I've willed, I'll do. They think me mad. I am madness maddened. The prophecy has been that I should be dismembered. I lost this leg. I do now prophesy that I'll dismember my dismemberer. Now be the prophet and fulfiller one. Ye great bully gods. You've knocked me down, but I'm up again. They have compliments to you. Come and see if you can swerve me. Swerve me! The path to my fixed purpose is laid with iron rails whereon my soul is grooved to run or on sounded gorges through the hearts of mountains under torrents' beds I rush so will I fight ye grim phantom futures! Stand on! The white whale spouts thick blood. I, Ishmael, was one of those aboard the Pequod. Oh, God. To sail with such a heathen crew. Your true whale hunter is as much a savage as any cannibal. But the harpooners aboard the Pequod were savages indeed. Tashtego, the blood-skinned Iroquois. Kwikwag, a tattooed island aboriginal. And Great Dagu, a giant coal-black African. <laughs> Blacksmith's forge was on the deck, and there the savages would crouch to worship fire. There, too, one day came Captain Ahab to watch the sparks fly and hear the hammer ring. Blacksmith! I suppose you can smooth most any seams and dents, no matter. 
matter how hard the metal? Aye, sir, I think I can. Can you smooth out a seam like this one upon my brow? Glad would I lay my head upon thy anvil and feel thy heaviest hammer beat between my eyes. So you see it in my flesh. And it worked down into the bones of my skull. Here. I want a harpoon made. One that a thousand yoke of beans could ever part. Something that'll stick in a whale like his own fin bone. There's the stuff. Lucky blacksmith, there are the gathered nail stubs of the steel shoes of racing horses. Horseshoe stubs, sir. Aye. Aye, there's the best and stubbornest stuff we blacksmiths ever wore. So it is indeed. These stubs will weld together like glue from the melted bones of murderers. Quick! Forge me the harpoon! Hammer, man! Hammer and temper the steel! So it smells of fire! Like a musket's powder man! Stand it here! This harpoon is for the white whale! The white whale, my boy, is for the white beast! Hump! You hear? Now for the knife with barbs to cut and twist it in. Here are my razors, the best of steel. Here, blacksmiths, make the barbs and make them sharp as the needle sleet of the icy sea. Take a man, I have no need for him, for now I need a shave, cup, nor pray to. Here to work! Hammer, blacksmiths! Pound away! Now they take the no, 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 no water. No water for these daggers, please. Don't temper them with water. I want the true death temper. Ahoy there, Clash Dago, Creek, Hog, Dago, what say you, Pagan? We. You give me as much blood as will cover this bar. Here's my brave legs. Here now I'll make three punctures. Temper my harpoon with human blood. They go number two with him and they touch his head in the diable in the name of the devil. I baptize thee in the devil's name. Ship away! Aboard the Albatross! I've not spent three ashore. Forty years. Forty years I've fed on dry salt fare when the poorest landsman had fresh fruit to his daily hands. 
away, whole oceans away from the girl wife that I wedded. I widowed that poor girl when I married her, Starbuck. Oh, what a forty years fool as they have been. Do I look old? So very old, Mr. Starbuck. I feel deadly faint. Out. And humped. As though I were Adam staggering beneath the piled up centuries in paradise. Stand close to me, Starbuck. Let me look into a human eye. Human eye. This is the magic glass man. I see a green lamp. I see my wife and my wife and child. I see them in thine eyes. Captain, let's leave these deadly waters. Let's sail home. Oh, Think my... how joyously we'd bowl our way to all oh, that my harbor. harbor. I home is pitiful, and in the harbor there's safety, comfort, hearthstone, warm blankets, friends, and all that's kind to our mortalities. It's a mild wind to carry us home. And the air smells now as if it blew from a faraway meadow. They've been making hay on the slopes of the Andes, Starbuck. And the mowers are sleeping among the new moon hay. Captain Ahab, sir, shall I give the orders? Shall I tell them to put about, to sail for home? Home, oh, I see him. A oh, hump. Like a snow wheel. This mob he kick. Reach the board, mate, Thompson. Stand by your own way. Oh, oh Moby Dick. I clutch thy heart in a pass. Thunderbolts, beat me, beat me on his white back, boys, do this for me, and I'll fill your caps with gold. There's white water again. Close to me, me my harpoon. Stand up and give it to me. There. That's his hump. Steady. Here she goes. Never will you capture an old man. In heaven's name, no more of this. It's worse than devil's madness. Wait, you see him sing out for every spout. We spout ten times a second. Oh, she blows. Where to? Lake to lure. Play me on, boys. Fool my hearties. See that white water? I shall go staring mad. Fool me. Teddy, Teddy boys, help me. Push me stand the harpoon now. The eternal sap is running in old Ahab's arm. I'll try again. You got him. Here we go. The rope is broken. Harpoon, it's gone. It's an omen, Captain. Shall we keep chasing this murderous beast? He swamps the last man. Shall we be dragged by him to the bottom of the sea? Ahab! It's forever Ahab, man! The deed's immutably decreed. And I'm the faithful lieutenant under orders. Where is he now? Can't see the spout, sir. Too dark to see. Huh? There he is! He shoots like an arrow out of the sea. Stand by me, man. Oh, you see an old man. Cut down to the stump. Leaning on a shattered lance. Is Ahab. Believe ye men in things called omens? You feel brave. Oh! Now then. Crack your backbones. 
and bite oh. your knives in two. As to the seas alive with sharks, they crowd our wake oh. like forage of forage. Oh. I meet you this time, Moby Dick. Oh. Here for the open jaw, my boys. Oh. I grin at you. Oh. I grin at you, you grinning whale. Oh, oh you sweet powers of air. Hug me close. A lance now. Steady. My eyes are blind. I cannot see. I cannot see. Yet. From hell's heart, I stab at the moby dick. For hate's sake, I spit my breath at thee. The jaw! The jaw! The drama is done. The Peckwood, all her crew and captain drowned. And only I, Ishmael, escaped to tell this tale. Oh, Ahab, my captain, noble soul, still do you move before me in all your majesty. Up from the spray of your ocean perishing into the unbodied air. Carson Wells will return in just a moment, but first let me again remind you to be patient with your dealer when occasionally these days he's unable to supply you with all the Pabst Blue Ribbon you'd like. He's doing his best, you can be sure of that. Yes, and here's something else you can be sure of. Every single bottle of Pabst Blue Ribbon you do get will, as always, be the happy blending of never less than 33 fine brews. Yes, every foaming frosty glass you enjoy will, as always, have that famous Pabst Blue Ribbon flavor. Not too heavy, 
not too light, but fresh, clean, sparkling with a real beer taste coming through the way you like it. So keep asking for Blended Splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. And now again, Mr. Well. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, please join us again. Our offering will be John Galsworthy's great love story, The Apple Tree. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>